Welcome back. So while I was away, the guys completed most of the heavy layups, or I think pretty much all the heavy layups on those six moulds they've been working on. So now it's on to creating the bracing. So here's one of the ones for the parachute straps with the bracing in place, ready to be glassed. And this is that um, main spar there for the foreplane, and that also has some foam that the guys have put on there, so that just needs to have some uh, carbon laid up over that. And this is the one for the intake, uh, or sorry, the outlet for the cowling, so that one's ready to be uh, laid up over. And there's the one for the baggage doors. Again, uh, not only the foam, but the glass is ready. So pretty much knocking out these last six uh, moulds and it won't be long and they'll be all done and they'll be on to the last two that we have um, coming down the pipe. And there's uh, the other one for, um, or one of the ones for the main gear doors. And finally there's the other one for the other main gear door. And when I got back the new sensors for the uh, EGTs had arrived that I had ordered, so I needed to um, get those sorted out and also uh, spent some time on Monday there uh, yesterday wiring up the both of these because uh, I got the resistors that I was looking for so those are the uh, temperature senders that are going to go in the uh, straight tanks so we know what how much we're heating up the fuel and there's the new um, sensors there for the EGTs and I actually had to get Brit to come and weld on the new bungs because uh, when I was pulling out the fittings from the old weld bungs they stripped out and I believe I put some um, anti-seize in there, but I can't remember. Anyway, problem solved. And for something a little bit different, I wanted to walk you through my process for creating some of these parts, you know, starting out in the CAD and then actually going through to creating them um, out of actual metal or whatever we're doing. So in this case, this is the rudder pass-through control that you've seen before. And there's various different parts to it, and I've already ordered the materials for this. Uh, so they're sitting there and I just need to make the different parts. So the, that bit that I'm highlighting there, that's already been done. You've seen that being bonded in uh, to the keel. Uh, so the bits that I'm going to be working on are the top bit and the bottom bit and then the, the uh, tube that uh, links the two together. So this one that we'll focus on is actually the top piece. And just starting out, I'm actually going to be using a bit of uh, 4130 rectangle um, tube which is uh, one and a half inches wide by uh, three quarters of an inch high. And uh, so he, the first thing I've done in the CAD here is actually just oriented this so it's uh, lined up with how the machine's lined up. Now I'm creating another copy of the same part and just uh, positioning it so I can do the side cuts that I need to do. So I've got one for doing the face cuts and one for doing the side cuts. Uh, but let's just focus on the first one. So what I wanna do here is um, create an offset surface for where that big hole is there and I'm offsetting at 3 seconds of an inch which is basically half of 3 sixteenths which is how wide the bit is that I use to cut it, the end mill. So this gives me a line for the machine to follow uh, to create that hole and subsequently I do the same thing there for uh, creating uh, the, the uh, line to follow for cutting out the slot at uh, the end there so as you can see this is uh, basically what it looks like. So I offset those surfaces there and it gives me another line that I can follow just at, so the center of the end mill follows it and it creates the uh, slot uh, that I want to cut out. So each time I'm using a new file that I'm going to be doing some CNC from, I need to define um, our machine in there. So I actually, I've already done it on this one, but anyway, what ends up happening is um, I basically import our machine details so it knows that we have a five axis machine and such and just do that by doing load knowledge base there. And uh, once I have that, I can start creating uh, some tool paths. So let's start out with the engraving. This is the one where we're just gonna follow a path. And so I click on this button here and it allows me to choose um, a line to follow. So I'm choosing the top of that offset surface. And then I select the tool that I wanna use. And in this case, I'm using the flat milled uh, 3 16 inch wide and I can define um, the speeds for how fast the machine's running uh, there, and then the clearance plane, so how high it stays above it when it's transitioning from one place to another. And lastly, the cut parameters is what I define here, how deep I want it to cut and if I want to do steps and that sort of stuff. But seeing this is very thin uh, metal, I'm just going to do one step down and just run around and, and uh, make the cut like that. So I just specifying there 0.2 of an inch uh, deep. 
and uh, then you hit generate on there and uh, away you go and it creates the toolpath so that you can see it and then to verify that it's actually going to do what we want it to do we can uh, step through there uh, through the simulator and see exactly the tool and make sure that it's hitting the right surfaces and for some reason every time I'm recording um, SolidWorks likes to jump around when I try to rotate there it's very annoying it's only happened recently uh, probably a bug in Windows. Anyway, so you can see um, how that goes around. So it's doing what we want it to do. And so the next thing is to do the, the other one for the side cutouts. And before I do that, I needed to actually extend that offset surface so um, the, the uh, tool comes in from the side instead of dropping down um, in from the top. It just makes a cleaner cut that way. So I extended those surfaces just, I think, 0.2 of an inch. Um, so we'll start and there's the tool path for that and you see it basically comes in just does the turn and then comes back out again and that'll cut that little slot out and then I can just flip it over and run it again so once I got my tool paths done the next thing I do is post them which basically exports them to a text file um, in G code which is what the machine actually reads and I put them directly on a little SD card that we have just give them any name that you want um, just something that you can remember. I just oftentimes just use you know 2000, 3000 or whatever and sometimes I give them names but anyway there's the G code for that particular one and then the other one this is the one for that one cutting out the slot do the same thing on that and just give it a name and choose export so the G code is fairly simple for that because it's the engraving um, basically just has simple directions go this way go that way go that way uh, not very complicated um, but the, the speed's defined in there and all that sort of stuff, so um, it makes it pretty easy. So the next thing um, I wanted to do as well was I forgot uh, was to create some um, a tool path to drill these holes, and these I can just use with a quarter inch drill bit um, because they just that's all they are quarter inch holes. And so I just have selected those and I select the tool that I want, which is um, the drill mill, which I've got defined there, quarter inch. And the usual parameters, the um, cut depth, and generally I just do these by hand because I want to go through both surfaces there. So I just um, basically switch to manual mode once it's got it lined up and then I take it down and then bring it back up again. And then it moves to the next one and I do the same thing, just take it by hand. So there's the ones for that. So I just uh, can give those a little test and see and make sure that they're doing what I want it to do and ultimately export those and I'm ready to go to the machine. So here's the rectangular tube that I have, and I believe it's a 60 thou wall on that, or maybe 50, or I can't remember. Um, so I want to have three and a half inch uh, piece, so I just scribed a line on there and, and uh, did it with a T-square, and just put it up on the bandsaw and cut it. So here it is uh, over on the machine in the vise, and I'm running the first path there to cut out that big hole at the end. So just putting a little bit of oil on there. I kind of really wish that we had like a a proper machine for milling metal um, but anyway eventually we'll have one for now just uh, for the work on the prototype it's fairly quick just to do this um, so there's that uh, one with the hole cut out there and next thing to do is to uh, drill the holes in there and then flip it over and do the other side so there's the two holes drilled there and you see I've actually taken it all the way through with the with the um, mill when I was running it and just to show you kind of what I do here so um, Generally, I have to set the work offset, or basically set how where the end of the uh, end mill is in terms of height. So I've done that, um, and then once I do that, uh, I just basically zero the machine again, just running a little uh, tool path that sets it to zero, and then I can run my actual um, um, G code that I've exported. So I'm in remote mode here, and over here I choose uh, program and then I can see my programs that I have on my SD card so there's the 2000 and 2001 um, I put the other one on a separate card the one with the drill holes so I choose number three there and I set I choose to set that and you see it changes the file name to 2001 and that's the one for cutting the slot in the side and then I hit start and away it goes and hopefully it doesn't break anything so there you see it's moving into place now and it's just coming down and I've got it set super slow for uh, cutting this uh, steel so you can see now it's slowly moving along there and I'm just putting a little bit of oil on there just to keep it um, so it doesn't get too hot 
um, and didn't really have too many problems uh, with these with making this part so uh, there you go just goes down there um, and then makes a right hand turn another one and uh, you're done so here's that part there and you see I've actually cleaned it up ready for welding because it's going to have um, a piece welded in there and then there's the bottom piece that I also did so this is what I basically did today Tuesday and then there's a, a tube there I cut off a piece of tube and fit that into place that's going to be welded in to close that out and uh, the holes drilled in there um, they you'll, you'll see what those are for here in a second and uh, there's a bit of tube that's the joining tube that joins the two pieces together and that'll go through that pass through there and a little bit tricky it's such a tight fit there it's a bit tricky to try and put it in while I'm holding the camera but anyway um, there I'll show you what it looks like after I put it in so there it is turned upside down and you see it came out really nice fit didn't even have to do any work on that just basically fits beautifully um, so the diameter tube uh, and that was a one inch diameter and then that fits in the other one and there's going to be a bolt that goes through the bottom that I'll match drill in order to lock those two together once they've gone through that pass through and these little arms here they're going to have um, a little sleeve that I still got to cut and that get welded in there and then some bushings and they'll there'll be some uh, pins there or bolts that will hold those through to place and the idea of those is the cables for the rotors connect to those and because the cables are pull only um, you want to make it so when you're pushing on one rudder and it's pulling that one that the other one doesn't actually have the cable and get pushed back and try and sort of bunch up the cable or bend it so the idea is you push on the rudder one way and so, so the other way and then this one sort of allows it to basically slacken up for the other cable and you'll see that uh, later on when we have it all together and this is what it looks like there uh, in the fuselage so there's the path through that was bonded in there uh, I guess last week now and uh, it slides in there nicely in those bearings that I pressed in and uh, that will get welded up in a little cap on there because that needs to um, have a pressure tight seal uh, going across or throughout out through to the keel there and there's the uh, bottom of the rod at the bottom there as it comes out and then this is um, the piece in the place and as I said that'll have a bolt going through there uh, to lock that in place and uh, then the rudder cables will connect to that and while all that was going on the guys are busy glassing and finishing off the uh, braces for these different molds so you see they did the one for the outlet for the cowling and this is the one for the baggage doors so that one's uh, done bracing all in place and here you can see they're working on one of the ones for the main gear doors so they think I've got they've got uh, one or two more uh, left to do on those and then that big main spar I need to do that one as well and then we'll be on to that last two molds that I showed you last time so you can see they've got these other two here that are all um, cut and ready to go just need to be um, the resin put on there and they'll be all done so two molds left to go as I said and you'll see those on the next video and finally this is the uh, seal for uh, the new redrive and those are the uh, thrust washers and there's the journal bearings and actually only ended up ordering just one set initially wanted to get all the measurements off those and looks like they're going to work out for us so uh, Mark's been putting all that into the CAD now so this is the whole drive assembly itself um, but what's changing up there is the top part so you see that big rectangle thing is it's just like a placeholder right now for what the new housing is going to be obviously it's going to be you know a little bit more refined than that um, but anyway you can see the various parts in there so there's the seal the front seal and there's going to be the same one on the back end there's one of the journal bearings in there and there's the other one and then uh, he's got the thrust washers there and sort of you know on the left and right side but you can only see one side right now because the housing is hiding the rest of it there's the other one and then he has these other spacer washers here that we're going to basically machine and those are the ones that are going to allow us to adjust how much feed how much oil sort of uh, spills out um, from uh, the feed you know to the prop um, to allow give us that clearance so there's the oil's going to come down that channel there that I highlighted and then go into the prop through the hole there and then it will spill out underneath uh, those sort of washers there um, so that will be the same type of setup as what we had before except the washers in this case are thinner uh, so it's all coming along nicely and I think he's you know, got a little bit more work to do on it but I'm pretty happy with the progress and uh, the solid works now jumping around again <laughs> when I'm rotating uh, anyway so it's uh, coming along and um, it won't be long and we'll be able to actually send this off uh, up to Barry 
and have him start machining all this stuff. So that's our update for the first half of this week and uh, I'll be running the engine again uh, tomorrow night and um, we'll see how it runs at sort of full power with the jet fuel in it and also get to see how those EGT uh, sensors are working out. So thanks again for watching.